Howdy guys, it's Joe here, and today I want to talk to you guys some of the reasons why I personally think you might be stuck in Elo Hell and why you can't get out of it. Now, what these reasons are, or how they really came to be, is that I have some friends that are really stuck in it and they couldn't get out, and I gave them some tips that kind of helped them out. And as well with that, when I was playing CSGO for a while, I was stuck there, and when I was playing League of Legends for a while, I was stuck there. And even in Overwatch in Season 1, I was kind of stuck there, but I've used these tips to help myself get out and get up there in the world. Now, of course, these won't 100% always work all the time, you know, in every situation, but I feel like a lot of these can be nice and can help you kind of think about what you're doing and how you can get out of where you are, at least from my own experience. Anyways, because of YouTube 2016, make sure to leave a like. Let's get to 100 likes because otherwise YouTube pretty much screws over any YouTube channel. Uh, yeah. Anyways, though, with that said, let's get started. Now, the first thing that I see very often, really most places, and especially down in these lower rankings, is people not picking a main, and in particular, not picking three main characters that they like to play. Now, of course, I always recommend that you have three main characters that you like to play. A support, a tank, and then also a damage dealer, be it an offense or defense. They're both really damage dealers. You pick one of those that you want to main, and you have the other two as sub mains that you can play really whenever you can't get your main, and you go on from there. Really, this helps you a lot because it narrows down who you're playing, narrows down who you're putting all your time into, and that can help you improve very, very fast. Now, a problem that I often see, though, is that either people just simply won't pick their mains, they won't pick any main, they'll just play everyone and hope that maybe they could fill every single game, which I do not recommend. Try to play who you're best at, don't try to always fill. Or, what happens the most of the time, is that they pick a main, or they pick two mains, but after about a week, after two weeks, maybe three weeks, they get bored of the character, or you get bored of the character, you know? This character is not as fun as they used to be, so you switch it up. Or maybe you just lose like four games in a row and you're like, you know, this person's not working, so you switch it up. And then, you know, a week, two, maybe even three later again, you play again, and you realize, oh, maybe it's not working, so you switch it up. And again, and again, and again. I feel like this happens very, very often. And this is the one thing that you want to very much try to not do. You want to try to play similar characters or the same characters for as long as you possibly can. This will give you the most experience, it will give you the most time with them, the most aim practice, and the most game knowledge with the character. If you've been playing one character for like 200 hours, of course you're going to be doing a lot better than if you play every character for like 10 hours. It just kind of makes sense. Now to another thing that I feel like I hear a lot, and especially with one of my friends, you'll be saying that you cannot carry your games. And something that I've even heard sometimes is like, you know, I cannot carry my games, but you can carry my games. Uh, this happened with me especially. And I was thinking, well, why? I mean, sure, I'm a little bit better. Sure, I put in more practice than this other guy. But if he puts in the practice, he can carry the games. There's really no actual difference between me and him other than putting in practice. And I'd say that's a thing that you have to remember. You can carry more games if you put in more time. And as well, you can carry at least a slight majority of your games. Your team and the enemy team are both in the same pool of people. Every single game, you're going to be in the same pool. Maybe sometimes you get the AFKs, sometimes the enemy does, sometimes you get the idiot, sometimes the enemy does. Of course, it's completely luck-based, but via statistics, it should be about equal. But if you can be that one player that is always better than everyone else, that always, you know, is just slightly more skilled than everyone else, not even by a ton, just by a decent amount, or at least can shot call better than everyone else, you're going to be carrying yourself. You're going to be going up, and there's really no reason why you can't be doing this. I feel like a lot of people just put themselves down. They just think, you know, I can't be a player that carries my games. I can't be the player that wins the matches for my team. You can. You just have to put in the time. You just have to put in the practice mainly and learn different maps. But yeah, you definitely can. Don't put yourself down in that way or else you will especially get stuck. I feel like that's the main thing that gets people stuck. If you don't think that you can climb, you won't. But if you do think that maybe you can climb, you probably will. Next, this is a thing that I especially got when I was playing them um, down on a smurf, or I guess it was my friend's account actually, for just for a little bit just to see kind of how the lower rankings work to get in this game. Um, I realize that this happened very often. People tilt themselves when their teammates pick certain heroes or when their teammates don't make exact team comps. And I'd say, to your best ability, try not to tilt when either your team or the enemy team has a certain hero that either you don't like, that you don't want, that isn't exactly meta. Don't tilt yourself and just play the game. Uh, for example, the first game that I played down there, I had a Torbjorn and a Bastion offense. We ended up actually winning the game, though, because I wasn't to, to really at all. I, I mean, I was like, you know, this is kind of kind of weird, kind of different. I really don't appreciate it, but we're going to keep playing. and We're going to keep trying to win this game. Really, people will play who they want to play. People will go who they want to go and just kind of accept it and try your best. Of course, it's not appreciated that they're doing that. You wish that they would do something else. But you can't control them, and don't try to control them especially. If you try to, say, change your hero, um, a lot of the times, like if, you know, someone's like a Torbjorn main, and if you're like, change your hero, I really don't like playing with this guy, and then he switches to someone that he never plays, he's probably going to be doing worse as that new hero than his original guy. Of course, if you look at their player profile, and, you know, they play like 70 hours a soldier, you could be like, maybe you could try soldier, and they might switch, and that would be a good idea. 
But overall, just don't tilt yourself and just don't try to tilt your teammates. As well, just don't yell in the chat if someone's playing someone that's dumb. Don't report them. They can play who they want to play. Just try to win with that and just try to make it work. Sometimes it won't always work. Offense some metros can be a bit of a pain, but try your best. And you should be able to carry at least some games because do remember, the enemy team is often dealing with the exact same problem. For my next reason, and a pretty big reason to why you might be stuck, it once again kind of relates to your personal skill uh, versus your skill ranking, the ranking that the system thinks that you're at. And it's a thing that I feel like a lot of people have a problem with. Uh, think about this situation. You go into a ranked game, or you know, you go into Overwatch and play one or two ranked games, and you lose both those ranked games. What are you going to do? Well, for the majority of players, I feel like you're just going to quit, get a little bit salty, and just leave for the rest of the day. The problem about this is that really you aren't improving from those ranked games and that won't make you win any future games in the future. That won't help you get out of ELO Hell at all. Sure, you're trying to play a few games, but you're not trying to help yourself get better at the video game. As well with this, one to two games a day really won't give you that much time or that much practice in the game. You won't really be able to learn your character that well, you won't really be able to learn way too many strategies that well, and you overall just need more time into Overwatch to improve. Really, I'd say, in general, go into games, try to go into those games to just learn what's going on. Learn from your own team, learn from the enemy team, and learn from yourself. Sure, you may lose quite a few games. Sure, you may have to go down quite a bit of rank. But if you're helping yourself personally improve, I'd say that's definitely a worthwhile trade. And really, I'd just say, if you can help yourself get better now, it will help yourself in the future get up more skill rank. And I'd say that's really just a worthwhile trade long term. For another thing that I'd really like for you to kind of think about within this, and to really not get salty at the system, I guess, and really to kind of get a little bit of hope, is to realize that maybe you might have a few AFKs, maybe you might have some stupid people on your team, but you gotta realize that your team and the enemy team have the exact same pool of players that become a team. From here, let me tell you guys something that really should be quite nice to hear, and something that should help you maybe get out of your ranking, and maybe kind of help you get out of Eel Hell, uh, the fact that your team and the enemy team both come from the same pool of players. Once again, let me repeat that. Your team and the enemy team both come from the same skill ranking, the same pool of players. And the chance that you have a good player on your team and the chance that the other team has a good player on their team is exactly the same. And the same with a bad player and the same with an AFK. It's all really exactly the same. The only thing that makes it a little bit different is you. Are you really pulling your weight? Or on the other hand, are you doing amazing? Are you carrying your games? Or are you just being the average player in your ranking? I'd say really, if you are playing super well, if you are being able to do really great in your games, you can maybe increase your win rate to about like 52%. You could be that good player that people want on their team, that people want to carry them. At the same time, you have to realize that if you are getting a lot of troll players, the chance that the enemy team also has a lot of troll players is pretty high. And the chance that in the future, the enemy team will have the troll players instead of you is also pretty high. Really to just try to even this out and just to try to make the lobby system work out and to make, you know, the pool system work out, you have to put in a lot of games. You have to put in a lot of time into your games and a lot of time into ranked. Now, of course, some people just don't have enough time. Some people don't have like 300 games that they can shove into the game. But if you do want to get out of this rank, if you do want to get out of ELO Hell and you do think that you're, you know, slightly better than everyone else or even like the same rank, but you think that you can help your team win a little bit more, then just play a lot of games and... Via statistics, you should be able to win at least about 50% of the time, maybe even a little bit more if you are that really good player. And if you aren't that really good player yet, do remember that you can practice with these guys. You can practice with the people that are at a similar skill level and become that really good player. There's nothing really holding you down. As for some of the final stuff and some of the stuff you've probably heard before, I'd say definitely try to get yourself a teammate. Now, of course, everybody's heard this, uh, but a lot of people don't do this. The majority of players do play in solo queue, and I would say definitely don't do that, especially if you're in ELO Hell right now, especially if you can't go up in your rank, try to get a friend. Now, you may not know anyone, like, personally that plays Overwatch, but there's a lot of forums online. There's Reddit, there's Blizzard forums, and there's also Discords all over the place where you can try to find some people at a similar skill level that you can play with. And the really good part about this that we all know is that if you have a friend, it all makes so that only four people on your team can be a troll or can be a bad player, and while you guys might be average, while the enemy team has six people that could be bad players or could be trolls, and you only have four. So it really does give you a higher chance to win, and this is especially one of the best things to do to get out of ELO Hell. When you're dueling with someone that's even decent or even as good as you, it can really help you get out, and that's just probably one of the best things to do. It's kind of hard to find a friend, to be honest. It takes a while to do, but if you can put in a little bit of work to do that, a lot of work, I guess, it'll definitely be worth your while. And finally, two really quick things. Make sure to not waste your ult if your teammates are doing really stupid things. Let's say you're in a 3v6 and your Reinhardt goes for his ult and you're someone like Genji. 
maybe save that and wait for a 626 in the future. I feel like it's really easy to get baited into wasting your ultimates, especially at these lower elos or just where people kind of waste their stuff, but do try to save it and try to use it when you feel like you can personally carry with it the best. That's one of the things that can help you a lot. And from there as well, do try to practice your aim a little bit. Everyone can always increase their aim. Everyone can also especially increase their reaction time. I see this a lot. People just don't have the fastest reaction time. They don't turn the fastest. They don't realize when people are, you know, up close and personal the fastest. Just try to improve that a little bit. And that'll go really far. But there you go, that's just what I personally experienced with Elo Hell in the past and past games, and even with some friends in this game. Of course, if this helped you at all, make sure to tell me down below. And of course, this won't, you know, 100% fix your Elo Hell, but I feel like it can help a little bit. And yeah, just try it out. Try it out for like at least a week or two, and then see if you got any results, and just keep playing the game honestly. That's how you can eventually get out of it. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. As always, if you did enjoy, make sure to smash that like button. Comment down below your own experiences with this game and with this in particular. And as well, press subscribe if you want to see any more future tips or any more videos kind of similar to this or any really news videos as I do those quite often as well. Anyways, though, thank you all for watching. And as always, have a wonderful day.